Welcome to the Shuv Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. Shuv, S-H-U-V as in Victor, is a biblical Hebrew word meaning to return, to turn back, i.e., to come back to walking in God's holy ways, His commandments, the terms of the everlasting blood covenant. Yeshiyahu, Isaiah 44, verses 21 through 22, quote, Remember these things, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant, I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have wiped out your transgressions like a thick cloud and your sins like a heavy mist. Shuva alai, return to me, for I have redeemed you. End quote. If you are listening to this podcast, chances are the Lord has been speaking to your heart about returning to covenant faithfulness, about keeping the terms of the ancient covenant reiterated that day from Mount Sinai, the covenant that Messiah Yeshua kept, the covenant we broke. Thankfully, because of the work of Messiah Yeshua, an innocent taking on our penalty, Jew and Gentile can be grafted into the vine. The Ruach HaKodesh writes the terms of the covenant, the written Torah, upon our heart. Salvation is by grace through faith, and the written Torah is the grateful duty of the redeemed community. It's a covenant thing. Enough said. Okay, on to tonight's topic. Did you ever wonder why the mode of capital punishment commanded by God in Scripture is stoning? Why stones? Why not other methods? Here's an example of a commandment from Devarim, Deuteronomy 17, verses 2 through 7. Quote, If there is found in your midst, in any of your towns, which Hashem, the name, Yudhevave, your God is giving you, a man or a woman who does what is evil in the sight of Hashem, your God, by transgressing his covenant, and has gone and served other gods and worshipped them, or the sun or the moon or any of the heavenly hosts, which I have not commanded. And if it is told to you, and you have heard of it, then you shall inquire thoroughly. Behold, if it is true, and the thing certain, that this detestable thing has been done in Israel, then you shall bring out that man or that woman who has done this evil deed, to your gates, that is, the man or the woman, and you shall stone them to death. On the evidence of two witnesses or three witnesses, he who is to die shall be put to death. He shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. The hand of the witnesses shall be the first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. So you shall purge the evil from your midst. End quote. So why stoning? Consider this. Number one, stones or rocks are God-made. No human tool has been used on them. Number two, the holy altar for blood sacrifices could only be made using earth or whole stones that had never been altered by man via tools. So it's clear to see that the stones in stoning provide a clear picture that connects the crime to the covenant altar which is comprised of natural rocks. The person received this penalty because they broke a term of the covenant that carried a demise via stoning verdict. It's a covenant thing. Stoning shows that the person was unfaithful to the covenant, a lawbreaker. Here's the commandment regarding altar building. You'll find that in Shemot, Exodus 20, verses 24 through 26. Quote, You shall make an altar of Adama, earth, for me. And you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I cause my name to be remembered. I will come to you and bless you. If you make an altar of avanim, stone, for me, you shall not build it of gazit, cut stones, for if you wield your tool upon it, you will profane it. And you shall not go up by steps to my altar, so that your nakedness will not be exposed on it. End quote. Also in Devarim, Deuteronomy 27, this commandment is repeated. It also states that Joshua was to set up stones coated with lime plaster with the terms of the covenant. The commandments were engraved in them clearly, so all the people could go to Mount Ebal and read them. So we see another picture of stone being connected to the terms of the ancient blood covenant. Remember Shimei? of the house of Saul who accused David of being a bloodthirsty man? 
You'll find it in 2 Shemuel, 2 Samuel 16, verse 13, quote, So David and his men went on the way, and Shimei went along on the hillside parallel with him. And as he went, he cursed and cast stones and threw dust at him. End quote. He cast stones and threw dust at David, in effect calling him a covenant breaker. Goliath of Gath had taunted the God of Israel. While still a youth, David railed, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? He then chose five brook-smooth stones and stuffed them in his pouch. The four other stones in his pouch? They were for Goliath's brothers, if needed. Facing the giant and his armor-bearer, David declared boldly, quote, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Hashem, the name Yudhe of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have taunted. This day Hashem will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from you, and I will give the dead bodies of the armies of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that Hashem does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is Hashem's, and he will give you into our hands." End quote. That's from 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, 47. David then loaded his slingshot, spun it round and round, released the load, and killed the offending giant with one stone. Like a bullet, the rock sunk into his forehead. Goliath got stoned. You see, all nations have broken faith with the Creator and are held accountable for breaking His laws. From the beginning, His Torah was for all mankind. In conclusion, so why stoning for serious crimes? The stoning stones are connected to the stones of the altar. It's a picture of breaking the terms of the ancient covenant. Remember, when faced with an issue or a question, our first thought needs to be this. What is the first word or commandment God gave us regarding that subject? You will find that Scripture interprets Scripture. And the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, or literally, the spirit of holiness, is our teacher. The Lord wants us to clearly understand his heart, his Torah. It is the lifestyle of the redeemed community. Be holy, for I am holy, he commands. I leave you with this psalm that you might want to pray before you start studying scripture. It's from Tehillim, Psalms 119, verse 18. Gal enai ve'abita, Niflaot metora techa. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things in your Torah. Also, Tehillim, Psalms 119, 10 through 11. Quote, With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden, treasured in my heart, that I may not sin against you. End quote. This has been the Shuv Show. I'm your host. Christine Jackman, Lila Tove, good night.